Infectious diseases have long haunted humans. The most recent COVID-19 pandemic has brought the entire world to a halt. But there's another such disease more than 200 years old. It still continues to infect 4 million people each year. Cholera. A discovery made by a scientist in a lab in Calcutta changed the way the world understands intestinal and diarrheal diseases. Yet, very few remember him. Professor Shambhunath Day. We saw his coming to the lab, our lab, by driving his own car and carrying a cold bucket which contained the vibricolidy culture. Sometimes we used to say, the Dr. Babu, you are spreading cholera in our lab. And he used to reply jokingly, no, no, Baba, no. These are all killed cultures. So I'm cleaning everything. There is no fear of cholera. Calcutta in 1949. In the aftermath of partition, the city was steaming with refugees and the hospitals with cholera patients. At the same time, with a PhD in hand, Shambhunath Day returned from London. He was appointed the head of pathology at the NRS Medical College, where countless cholera patients were admitted. As someone who grew up in a village near Chandanagar in Bengal, he was all too familiar with the harsh realities of life in rural India. He has seen probably cholera patients dying in front of him, and that really drove him to work in this area. It's a passion to serve the people and community at large. Professor Day began studying the pathogenesis of cholera, looking at how its bacteria affects the human body. But where did this disease begin? Cholera is an ancient disease. In 1817, the first cholera case was reported and it was thought to be emerged from Gangetic Belt. And that time it was confined to Indian subcontinent Gravely remembered as the Blue Plague, the world has observed seven cholera pandemics until 1975, which have caused more than 38 million deaths in India alone. So people get infection of cholera by ingesting either contaminated food or water. Orally, it enters into the system. Then it reaches the stomach. There it bypasses the gastrointestinal barrier and then it reaches the intestine where the pathogenesis of cholera starts. The cholera bacteria was discovered in 1884 by a famous German physician, Robert Koch. He also hypothesized that an endotoxin present inside the bacteria caused diarrhea and vomiting. This toxin can cause huge outpouring of fluid in the intestine and then purging of the fluid through stool, causing severe dehydration, which is responsible for death in case of cholera cases until it is treated immediately. Coach assumed that the bacteria affected the circulatory system of the body and most scientists didn't really look elsewhere. Professor Day was able to look over Coach's assumptions. He presumed that the bacteria targeted cells lining the small intestine. To prove his hypothesis, he developed an animal model. He did a very simple experiment that time, because that time there was no advanced medicine technology, even very limited resource and no funding. He took the culture filtrate of the Vibrio quality and he inject them in a segment of intestinal loop in rabbit model and ligate the both end of that part with silk ligature. After 24 hours, he saw that the uh, intestinal loop was full of uh, secretion. These secretions were analyzed at the Bose Institute with the help of Professor Day's friend, Mr. A.K. Sain. Working in a different institute as a guest scientist without any red tape is now a thing of the past. 
Professor Day had a feeling that a toxin inside the bacteria could be responsible for the secretions and not the bacteria itself. And to test his theory, he repeated an experiment multiple times by injecting just the toxin without the bacteria. He was right. He saw the same results every single time. Actually, the exotoxin, not the bacteria, is causing the cholera. And this exotoxin acts on the intestinal epithelium. It produces secretions, and there is a huge loss of water and salts from body. It was of huge importance because before that, people searched all over the body for the toxin. But he was the first person who could detect if you put toxin in the intestine, you get the cholera. So that is the beauty of the method. First, nature protika every issue. এবং নেচার পত্রিকাটা হলো একটা সায়েন্টিস্টদের বিরাট সম্মানের জায়গা সবাইকার বেরোয় না কাজ ওটা নেচারে ফার্স্ট বিলিজ প্রফেসর ডেজ ওয়ার্ক ওয়াজ হিউজলি সিগনিফিকেন্ট ফর প্যাথোলজি এন্ড পাবলিক হেলথ ওয়ার্ল্ড ওয়াইড হিজ অবজারভেশনস পয়েন্টেড আউট দ্যাট লস অফ ফ্লুইড ওয়াজ দ্য লিডিং কজ ফর ডেথ ইন কলেরা پیشنটস এন্ড বাই রিপ্লেনিশিং বডি ফ্লুইড মেনি লাইফস কুড বি সেভড হিজ ওয়ার্ক পেভড দ্য ওয়ে ফর ওরাল রিহাইড্রেশন থেরাপি mortality of cholera in ancient ages it was 50% without treatment which has come down to less than 1% so uh, we can understand the importance of this discovery by which the oral rehydration therapy has been established it ekta basic discovery eta kono karo riye theke na ekta notun niye discover mane nobel prize er jonno je je ie guno dorkar sob guno to othe chilo na dawar kaaje ডে so i don't need to publish even i am uh, his grandson i came to know about his work when i was doing my mbbs and that time i first uh, realized the importance of his work i read it in my microbiology book that the days loop method which is uh, universally accepted just as we are witnessing new strains of coronavirus emerge because of rapid mutations Cholera also underwent one in the 1960s. The classical strain of cholera was replaced by a weaker L tor strain, making the disease less lethal. The world could now start witnessing the end of cholera, but the importance of Professor Day's science was going to lie uncelebrated in the pages of medical textbooks. He was really disheartened because his old technique was based on the classical cholera. He used to lament my old classical cholera is gone and that is one of the frustrating thing which probably prompted him to give up his research later on retired kollo tokhon bhablo je active nijeke rakhte hobe tokhon choto kore lab ta ami babar shonge ekmatro ami to thaktam kaje ami বাবার সঙ্গে ওই ল্যাবরেটরিতে হেল্প করতাম কাজ করতাম দুজনে মিলে হ্যাঁ একটা আপনাকে ওটা দেখানো ওটা রয়েছে একটা ইজিজি আছে এইখানে থাকতো ইজিজি ওইটা হলো বাবার সন্ধে হলে না বাবার ইজিজি আর এরকম মাথা দিয়ে কী চিন্তা করত ওই সন্ধেবেলাটা না একটা কী হতো সাইকোলজিক্যাল দিয়ে বাবা ভীষণ ডিপ্রেসড হয়ে during his last days he was disappointed and disheartened no recognition no honor though he was uh, not like that to pursue the monetary or that way but still a scientist need recognition at least when people came to know of his work they asked who was dr de how come we don't don't know his contribution Did he get any award from the government of India? Padrasi, Padmavishan? Find the list. No, he is not there. Why he missed him? 
Why on earth we missed him? Finally, in 1978, he was invited to attend the 43rd Nobel Symposium on Cholera and Related Diarrhoeas to express his views, where he said, I have been dead since the early 1960s. I have been exhumed by the Nobel Symposium Committee. And these two days with you make me feel that I am coming to life again. He used to do all the work with his own hand, cleaning everything. And he was handling a lot of patients' blood. But during the handling process, he got infected with hepatitis. At that time, there was no vaccine for hepatitis. I remember my professor, when he went to visit him in his deathbed, then Professor Shen asked, how did you contract the disease? Uh, Dr. Day painfully smiled and said, professional hazard. It took almost 50 years between Coach's identification of the cholera bacteria and the discovery of the exotoxin that causes the disease. Because of this discovery, the pathophysiology of various intestinal diseases and diarrheal diseases caused not only by Vibrio cholerae but by other enteric organisms could be understood. We know a lot of things particularly after the discovery of Dr. Day on cholera toxin. But again, control of cholera not only depends on the scientific research, but also it has economic annotations. Today, cholera is a disease of the developing world. Lack of sanitized portable water and a hygienic sewer system leads to cholera outbreaks. An economic disparity directly equates to the number of deaths caused by it. We get still epidemics of cholera here and there. India and Bangladesh used to be the home of cholera, but now it has spread to many other countries, including in Africa, where it was not known to be of prevalence. Communicable diseases like cholera have been a huge health burden for highly populated countries like India, where resources are scarce. The COVID-19 pandemic has emphasized the need for stronger public health systems and a timely recognition of scientists like Professor Shambhunath Day can inspire many more researchers to work on local problems.